that's what you said. Put my name down, that's what you said. Depend on me, that's what you said. Leave it with me, that's what you said. If you wanna talk, blah, see that what you do matches what you said. Don't really care about what you said. Cause what you did is not what you said. Yeah, yeah. Okay, take it away. Well, that's just the just released new single from British born Nigerian Kiwi hip hop artist and producer Hugh Ozumba, otherwise known as Unchained XL. His debut EP, Foreign Legacy, was launched in March and it blends traditional sort of Afro beats inspired rhythms with various styles of hip hop. It is great to have you on the ch on the show. Uncha do I call you Unchained XL or do I call you Hugh? Uh, anything you prefer. Hugh's yeah. Fine. It's really nice to have you here. Oh, welcome. It's fantastic um, to be here. Quite a fascinating background as well. So you were born in England. What made your family move to New Zealand? Yeah, so my parents did their postgraduate studies in the UK. And my dad, uh, who's a doctor, found a job in Auckland and um, brought us over here. So what age were you when you came over? Uh, I was only 16 months. Wow, okay, yeah. so you're a Kiwi. Yeah. Yeah. Right, so given the pedigree of your parents, it must have been hard when you said, hey, I'm going to do uh, music. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it, would take, it helped that I went to uni, worked for a little bit, so I had something to fall back on just in case. Yeah. And well, what got you initially into music? Uh, I've been doing music since I was very small, so my parents forced me to do piano from the age of four. As parents uh, do. Yeah, yeah, but I'm so thankful for that now because it's such an amazing foundation. But I did music uh, right through school, um, I picked up drums, bass, uh, vocals, production, and that's where I got started and that's yeah, how things started rolling. So if your parents ever said, oh, you know, I can't believe you're you know, a musician, we wanted you to be a doctor or whatever, you can say, well, you made me do the piano when I was uh. mum and dad. <laughs> that's how it works. So how much do you think your, your heritage and the different cultures where you've been surrounded with have influenced your type of music? Um, throughout my life, an increasing amount. Obviously, at the moment, um, I'm intentionally embracing it as much as I can and sort of forming my own sort of unique identity, which is obviously an amalgamation between that and my lived experience as a Kiwi. Yeah. And 2018's been a stellar year for you so far. Take us through what has been happening this year. Yeah, so the big thing for me was um, touring in the UK. I linked up with a band called Afro Cluster from Cardiff in Wales uh, last year via social media, and we just got talking. Um, the vocalist is also a Nigerian, so we sort of um, had a connection there. And, uh, you know, I brought up the idea, you know, maybe I can come and do some shows with you. He said, you know what, in our spring, we've got a few shows, you can jump on it. So I leaped at the opportunity. So you went and toured in the UK? Yeah, I did five, uh, four shows over there. And how was that experience? Oh, it was incredible. It was it was very challenging, um, but yeah, I loved it. I absolutely and the loved type it. of music, do you think it's embraced in different ways in the UK to New Zealand? Or? Yeah, I, to be honest, I was a little bit nervous because obviously uh, the UK has quite a big African population, African diaspora, and they're used to this kind of uh, the sound. So I was, uh, I was a bit you know, are they going to receive me well, you know, um, but yeah, you know, the crowds loved it. Um, the song that, you know, you played, which is particularly a grime song, which, um, you know, is the home is in England. Uh, they, they loved it, so it was very positive. And, and given that you did a lot of study before you ventured into music full time, was there anything about your study that you managed to transfer to your music career? Uh, a little bit. So I studied computer systems engineering at um, Auckland Uni, and a lot of the technical stuff um, that went on there sort of helps me in the production side of things. Uh, right, so you do your own production? Yeah, right? I do my own production. I started learning um, sort of composition and arrangement in high school and moved on to sort of production as I went to uni and it just it's made things a lot easier. I don't have to wait for beats, I don't have to wait for instrumentals, that kind of stuff. Yeah, and I exactly. can really d drive my own direction. You yeah. can make your own. Exactly. So you gave up your, so you became full-time musician yep. last year. Yeah, that's correct. So um, I started off as a test engineer at a company called Serato. I uh, progressed oh, yeah. to, uh, to become a test automation engineer, which is kind of like a software engineer focused on testing. Um, and then, yeah, I guess my passion um, for music was just really tugging on me, and um, I decided I need to just make it happen. So right, it would have been a good place to be working. I mean, sort of... Yeah, yeah. it was a fantastic company, yeah. Yeah. Uh, it must have been scary, though. I mean, when you do that initial, like, OK, I'm going to do it. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to cut loose, and I'm going to go and make some music, and that's going to be my job. Yeah, it, it, was, it was terrifying, but um, I'm, I'm at the age... <laughs> Why and, not? And you know, the style of music that you're doing, your whole image, you know, say 10 years ago in New Zealand, if you were based here, do you think you'd be able to do this? Yeah, that's, that's an interesting point. I definitely think um, now there's sort of an increased consciousness um, of the general sort of public and people are very much embracing their own heritages and stuff. And I think that's conducive. Um, for my music to sort of shine through, and you know, people are aware, you know, okay, he's an African guy, and mm. he's he's embracing that. It's, what's the most cool. important thing with your music? I mean, what's the most important way to get it heard? Do you think? Um, definitely uh, social media and streaming sites and YouTube and that kind of thing. Um, yeah, I mean, I love radio and TV, but at the moment, I think 
uh, for independent artists, the way forward is definitely online. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, safe answer. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and you were touring in a metal band, is that true, a few yeah, years so ago? Yeah, so I, uh, I started a band with a good friend of mine in 2009, um, and we didn't actually think it was going to go too far when it started, but um, we managed to get members, and it just took off. So for four years we were touring, we were playing, uh, people loved us, we went... Uh, all over New Zealand and yeah. And, and apart from the obvious, you yeah. know, because it's metal and what you're doing now, yeah. you know, is there much difference between the types of people? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you mean, you mean in the crowd? Or? Yeah, yeah. Um, Can I know, answer the, that one? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> 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 to be honest, um, I mean, there are obvious differences, but I think like the, the love and appreciation for music and the, the venture. Uh, that unifies everything. Else. See, and that's what I was wanting him to say, because <laughs> yeah. I'm with him on that one, I'm with him on that You're one. Gotcha. Music's hey, universal, isn't it? I must mention though, your beautiful top, where did this come from? Uh, yeah, so this is uh, Nigerian lace. Um, we usually import the material from Nigeria and get it made here. It's yeah. gorgeous. Uh, yeah, and stylist as well. Uh, I have I have a couple of tailors that I rely on. Yeah. Jeez, you are so clever. My goodness, is there anything this guy can't do? Uh, but you've also got you've got quite a good posse of uh, other people that are helping you out. The scene in New Zealand taking off. So tell us about the single. But do they know? Yeah. So but do they know? Um, that was a song that I actually wrote last year. That I involved. I decided to involve uh, my fellow artist Jess B and another artist called Nyo Nonso, who's a, also Igbo Nigerian like me. And I, I guess the philosophy behind it was the whole um, coming together of two different cultures and forming a new identity. I think there's a lot of power in the, um, in the fact that I am an African um, person but I'm also a Kiwi and the kind of culture that I'm entering into in New Zealand in particular because um, I was one of the first Nigerians here, um, I'm creating the culture that I live in. And um, a lot of people, a lot of my peers are experiencing that. They just don't know how to you know, describe or how to capture it. So I thought I'd make a song celebrating that because um, for a lot of people it can be quite a tense yes. thing. Yeah. Um, it could be something of a lot of struggle and something of a lot of um, trying to work out your identity, but I think yeah. it's something to be celebrated. So I thought I'd make a song celebrating my heritage, but also celebrating that I'm doing something unique. And you yeah. definitely are. It sounds amazing. I love the sound. I think it sounds awesome. Thank you. Um, yeah, thank you so much man. for joining us today. Oh, no problem. It's my pleasure. Untrade XL's debut EP, Foreign Legacy, is available now, as is his single, But Do They Know? You can check him out online for further info.